When I was in high school, I remember uh, sitting in the hall before our classes started. I don't know why I was early that day. It's weird. I was never early to school. Uh, and I'm sitting in the hall, and I see this student who has red tape across his mouth. And I was like, bro, what are you doing? And he hands me a card, and on the card it just says, I am united with those who do not have a voice. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And so then I see a table in this building, and we have one of our teachers there who's head of the Respect Life Ministry, and she explains, we're basically just doing this to raise awareness, but you can just put this piece of red tape on your mouth for the entire day, and then we'll give you these cards, and you can show them to anybody who asks. And I said, wow, this looks like a great reason for me not to answer any questions in class. I am in. So I told this story to Father Dat, and he was like, Father Christopher, I've really prayed about this, and I want you to wear a piece of tape for the entire month of October. <laughs> he didn't say that. <laughs> well, he did, but he didn't mean it. <laughs> this weekend, we kick off Respect Life Month, which has promoted the entire month of October. And this is our month. Our church stands strong against what JP2 termed as the culture of death. And this stand is not a voluntary stand. The Father has asked us to protect his vineyard, to work his vineyard, to work especially for the most vulnerable, those without a voice. If we call ourselves Catholic, we call ourselves pro-life. These are hand in hand, and this is not controversial. In today's gospel, there is nothing controversial about the son agreeing to work the field. In fact, at this point, Jesus' parable is rather boring. The story changes, though, when this son fails to follow through. And it becomes even more compelling when the other son who did not want to work in the field, changes his mind, changes his heart, and shows up in the vineyard. Last summer was the monumental overturning, of course, of Roe v. Wade in the Dobbs case. With one decision, the federal right to abortion was gone and given to the state. A huge step, hopefully one of many more to come, praise God. But what is available now? Satan persists in attacking this vineyard, in destroying God's fruit. If you visit the website for Planned Parenthood of Greater Texas, you will almost immediately find their bad news, told you on the website that abortion is very hard for us to get now, and a link to abortionfinder.com. And there's a banner across the page of abortionfinder.com that says the following. New court rulings may affect future access to medication abortion in the U.S. As of now, access to medication abortion has not changed. That's the most important thing that they want their prey to know about. While there are no abortion appointments in the state of Texas right now, there are these abortion pills available, and these mothers are continually preyed upon. Recently at St. Faustina, someone from our Respect Life Ministry asked me if they could hang a few flyers spreading the awesome news that the abortion pill can actually be reversed because it's two pills taken several days apart, and with intervention in between, a life can be saved. I saw this email, and I got scared. I thought, what if people are offended when they see these in the back of the church, when they see these in the CEC? I said, wouldn't it be better on a college campus? I even said that in my email. And our parishioner responded, Father Christopher, it may reach one person. 
And if it does, that is one life saved. And that is one life that I, for a moment, wasn't willing to save. As someone who says, I am Catholic, I am pro-life. But our faith is much more than knowing what is right. Our faith is loving right. Our faith is loving like Jesus Christ. At my final judgment, the Father is not going to ask me, Father Christopher, how much do you know? He's not even going to ask me what I believe. He's going to know what I truly knew, what I truly believed by the way my heart has been conformed to him. I want to take a moment, though, to say some words to anyone who has had an abortion, been involved in abortion, become prey to this culture of death. I am so sorry that, one, this culture has let you down. I am so sorry that we Catholics have let you down. And I'm so sorry that I specifically have let you down. I'm sorry that I didn't work hard enough to let you know how much I love you, how much he loves you. How much I love your child, how much he loves your child, and how much we love your child. That I didn't work hard to tell you the simple fact that the Lord has every single grace to forgive your past and restore your future. I am so sorry that I said that I'd be in the vineyard and when there was fruit in your womb, I was not a laborer. But I want you to know and I want all of us to know, all of us to remember that we worship a God, we worship a Heavenly Father who does not change amidst all of our mistakes, all of our confusion, the constant pressure in this culture, our Father looks with one gaze, one gaze of mercy, one gaze of love, and we see that gaze in the Father in today's gospel. After that first son defies the Father saying, I will not, there are no words from the Father. Sound familiar? I don't hear any words when I sin. There's no immediate punishment. There are no cutting words of condemnation. There is simply patience. And with the son who agrees to work in the vineyard, the father does not celebrate. He doesn't point to the other son and talk about how much better he is. He does not offer premature praise. He simply waits. This is how our Father operates. He waits. Always. He is never surprised when you and I are disobedient to the church, disobedient to natural law, disobedient to Him. He continues to wait in silence, asking, Are you ready to use all of that grace? Are you ready to avail of my Son's mercy? This Sunday, we kick off Respect Life Month. And we've got awesome, awesome news for the culture of death. That our Father does not change. He's not screaming at this culture when we want to. We have news that for all of us who feel guilt in our heart, that's not impending doom. That's not a terrible punishment coming any minute. It's a heart longing for mercy, longing to return to the vineyard. So brothers and sisters, if you don't call yourself pro-life, the Father is waiting. If you do call yourself pro-life, but are tempted and succumbing to fall into judgment, 
on the absolute countercultural heroes that choose to keep their children, the Father is waiting. If you call yourself pro life and you haven't done enough, you've continued to wear that tape across your mouth, the Father is waiting. Because let us remember. The father is silent because he has grace, because he has mercy. That child in the womb is silent because he has no voice yet. She has no voice yet. You and I are the voice of this situation. And finally, if you or someone you love have been deceived into committing, into participating in the sin of abortion, the Father is waiting. The Father is waiting, hoping that we hear Him in the silence. Hoping that you and I become laborers in the vineyard. No matter what we said before. No matter our past. Amen.